Hello everyone, I am Crypto Renzi and this is your channel for Apex Bitcoin and crypto news. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to first welcome anyone here that's brand new. Uh, please go ahead and subscribe if you are new. And for those of you that are been here before, welcome back. And yes, you saw the title, Earn More Money. So for those of you that possibly had taken my trade or taken my advice, remember none of this is financial advice. This is only entertainment and educational purposes only. And that video is here in case you want to see it. That was the first video I posted for October. So how the month was going to portray. I talked about Ethereum, but I mainly talked about Solana, how I was liking what I saw and continuing to add to my bags. Well, that position alone, just in 30 days is up over a hundred percent. So again, congratulations to any of you who may have jumped in on that with me and even more congratulations to you guys or gals who may have already had that position and have continued to dollar cost average in. Kudos to you all the way around on that. And I have many more uh, surprises and there's a nugget I'm going to keep for you for those of you who wait until the end that trust me, you are going to want to see it. It's another thing that I have been heavily investing in and I think it's something that potentially you guys may want to take a look at. And just a note on this before I dive in, remember, this is a journey. I want you to come on with me. I'm never going to tell you what to do. I'm never going to shill anything to you. Even the wallet videos and everything I do, these are things I personally use, personally test. I try everything out, give you the pros, give you the cons. It's important to me to look out for you. So I want to make sure you know you have a channel you can come to where you're going to always get honesty and integrity and I'm going to share my journey with you. Like I said before, I just want to create a, a fun environment and ethos where you can watch these videos, be part of a family, watch my journey. And then you ultimately decide what journey you want to go on. Because remember, everybody's different financially. You need to understand your risk tolerance. You need to understand, okay, I have some money. I'm ready to trade. I have some money. I'm ready to invest. And remember, when I say trade, it depends on how you want to do it. Okay. If you are a professional, if you're very seasoned, you can actually trade derivatives. Okay. Even though that's super risky, but there's people who know how to do that. Sometimes you get in a position heavily and you want to hedge against it. You can trade derivatives against it. And again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then don't even worry. No worries. But I just want to make sure I speak to everyone because there's all different types of people that watch my channel. So I want to make sure anyone who is your first time here and have no clue what cryptocurrency or stocks maybe are, or someone who has been maybe a professional trader or, or Wall Street analyst or someone who obviously knows the stock market and the crypto market backwards and forwards and maybe trade strategies like iron condors or, you know, just writing covered calls for passive income any of that stuff and everything in between. I'm here for you just so you understand how the journey works. Right. Yeah. And there's a lot of positive news still building and mounting for Bitcoin. Because remember, ultimately, that's our safe haven. That's where our true safety and foundation is in Bitcoin. I don't like to get too crazy and deep in the alts. I have a few, not many, but those are strictly to just grab some profit, dump it into Bitcoin, grab some profit, dump it into Bitcoin. And I'm going to go over a strategic chart with you that I found that I want to show you that I think is going to be an amazing teaching lesson for each and every one of you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. All right. And first things first, let's go ahead and look at the market. Let's just see how things are looking. So right now, Bitcoin has is up about 3% for the week where uh, we pumped just above $35,000. Uh, Ethereum up 5%. Again, it's we've had some good performance for the month, but Ethereum has been a little sluggish in my opinion. And I'm going to touch on this a little bit further in the video. Just, you know, my theories and, and my opinion and thoughts on this. We obviously been keeping an eye on Solana. Again, 30, almost 35%. This has been fantastic. Pumped up to, uh, I think it crested up to $44. Now we're back down to $42.60, but still looking very strong and bullish. All right, now let's go ahead. I know you've seen this chart from me before, but I always like to go back to it as the new month begins. As you can see, it's already taken four days into November at 0.33%. But in case you don't know, this is the monthly returns of Bitcoin dating back 10 years 
broken down into each month. Just like all the other times I've showed you this, I want you to pay attention to where the halving cycle is and how it affects the months after it. So the halving cycle broke down on the uh, 2012, 2016, and 2020. So every four years, think of it like the Olympics or think of it like uh, the US election cycle. So it's interesting. You never know how Satoshi Nakamoto designed this or planned this. There's even theories that, as you know, when there's a new election coming up like there is next year, it's always bullish for the stock market and typically usually bullish for crypto if you look at the patterns of how it's been. Again, no one truly knows, but it's just interesting to think about. I fully believe we're going to be bullish again for November and even bullish again for December. There's so many factors pointing to that. So besides the fact of looking at the increase here, you know, after the halving, I mean, look at this, almost 450%. The increase here, 53%. The increase here at 42.95, right? Now we did have a decrease in 21. Okay, this was when things started to fall off the cliff a little bit. But again, that's good news for you long-term diamond hand holders because this is when you want to be dollar cost averaging it. Okay, so obviously very bullish again for November. So why do I say that? Well, number one, we have the halving cycle coming around next year in April. That's point one. Point two, it's very likely, as you know, the spot Bitcoin ETF is going to be approved soon. It's coming, folks. It is coming. And that's just another super bullish thing to look forward to. If you remember a few weeks ago, there was fake news that released that it get, did get approved. And you saw this God candle just print of like a four, four or $5,000 pump just immediately. So yeah, you, you have that to look forward to as well as, let me also show you, Michael Saylor is just continuing to buy Bitcoin via his company with MicroStrategy. Sure. Uh, and I definitely want to show you this article. There's some really powerful points that Michael Saylor makes in here. Those of you who may not know Michael Saylor, he's probably the biggest Bitcoin bull you're gonna find. Uh, he used to be the CEO of MicroStrategy, but now he's the executive chairman of MicroStrategy, but still plays a huge role in everything that goes on in the company. He's talking about why he believes there still will be a, a 10x from here. For the industry to move to the next level, we need to migrate to adult supervision, says the MicroStrategy executive chairman. And there's a lot of stuff in this article you're going to hear that I've previously spoken to and pointed out in previous videos, particularly on my BlackRock video about how I see the future, because Michael Saylor is going to talk about how banks and institutions are going to have to step in and eventually play a part in this. And Jamie Dimon and Chase Bank is already trying to make their own coin, uh, which is coming out. So again, Jamie Dimon was very negative for the longest because he was packing his bags. And now, of course, he's releasing his own token. So more to come on that story. But Anyway, this is just a uh, super bullish news as well to add to the agenda of Bitcoin. You can never have too much Bitcoin, says Michael Saylor. Again, I couldn't agree more. Now, first among them is what's soon to be sizable reduction in the supply coming along a surge in demand. Very important what I just read because the halving cycle is coming. So let me read that part one more time. Soon to be sizable reduction in the supply coming alongside a surge in demand. Bitcoin miners, says Sailor, need to sell Bitcoin in order to keep the lights on. And he noted those sales are currently running at about $1 billion per month. Yes, you did read that correctly. The miners obviously work. Bitcoin is proof of work. So the miners do the work to, to do the transactions, to push the Bitcoin in the blockchain. This is how you move your Bitcoin around peer to peer and they get a piece of it. And every four years, the mining cycle gets cut in half, which basically cuts their supply in half and cuts their uh, production cost and fees in half. So they need to keep up with demand as well as everyone who's purchasing and buying Bitcoin. So this is a super bullish thing for Bitcoin. And again, Satoshi Nakamoto, a true genius in just the way he derived and invented this. It, it's truly phenomenal. But let me also read this point here. I think this part here is super important to note. For the industry to move to the next level, Saylor says, we need to migrate to adult supervision. We need to rationalize away from the 100,000 crypto tokens that people are manipulating to Bitcoin. 
That is so true. Amen. You have to understand, most of you, or if not all of you who are watching this channel, are pretty savvy with crypto. You understand now. There's hundreds of thousands of tokens. Almost all of them are absolute garbage and are all going to go to zero and are all going to take your money and most will get rug pulled on. I do not want that to happen to anyone on my channel. I consider you guys part of the, the Crypto Renzi family and I do not want anyone in my family getting rug pulled or, or stolen from or anything unscrupulous like that. When you take a step back, because you men and women, guys and gals are very educated, but the majority of the world doesn't even know what Bitcoin is. Don't kid yourself. It's still less than 10% full global adoption. So 90% of the world doesn't even know what Bitcoin is. And that number is probably more like 97, 98% have no idea even what cryptocurrency is. Because remember, Bitcoin's separate from cryptocurrency. So if you just throw in like a meme coin, something that's totally pointless at these people, they really not going to have a clue what it is. But if you tell them, oh, Pepe pumped, you know, 10,000% in a week, then everybody just sees a get rich quick opportunity. They jump in and they get burned because you need to remember there's always a winner. There's always a loser. There's always a buyer. There's always a seller. And these meme coins are propped up on the proposal of all the unscrupulous people who's trying to steal from you, get in super early. They release it, the coin pops and they dump on your heads. That's what happens with most of these meme coins. Again, not trying to hate on them, but I'm trying to make a point on what Michael Saylor's talking about because the majority of the world ties Bitcoin with these meme coins. Again, the majority of the world, not you smart people. Obviously, we're a small minority here who even know this stuff as well as we do. This protocol needs to change. We need the world to start looking at Bitcoin separately and just stop all these crazy tokens and get rich quick schemes. I mean, I'm sure you guys saw what happened with Sam Bankman Freed. I don't like to report on drama and news, but I'm sure most of you saw. I mean, he's he got indicted for everything, found guilty on all seven charges. So again, you reap what you sow, right? Now, let's go ahead and look at the Bitcoin chart. Let's get into a little chart work. This is some very bullish signals I'm seeing here. So this yellow ribbon is the 200 day moving average, and this is the weekly chart. So every candle you see printed is weekly. Okay. Just in case you don't know, but notice it's pointing up right now. Okay. So that's definitely a bullish indicator. Point two, you can see how we've broken through resistance, another bullish indicator. And we've taken two steps above it. So we are sitting pretty here, getting ready to establish a new support level. So I love, love, love what I see here on the Bitcoin chart. Now let's go ahead and hop over to Solana next. Now here, I want to do a good teaching lesson for you. I'm always talking about dollar cost averaging. Okay, this is a perfect chart. Again, you couldn't have scripted it any better. So I was, I was doing research for the video today. I saw this and I was like, bingo, I have to talk about this. I need to frame this in a way so each and every one of you can understand. And this is beautiful. So again, you see the 200 day moving average coming through here. You see how we are pointing up again. You see how Solana has just busted through everything. Okay. Now this line here, is an interesting line I drew because this is exactly almost to the day a year ago. Okay. And let's just say you happen to buy here because I always hear stories of people like, Oh, I bought Bitcoin at 65,000. I'm so depressed. Oh, I bought Bitcoin, you know, at 61,000. There's nothing to be depressed about. If you understand the asset you own, you understand you don't want to sell it or get rid of it. And more importantly, and I can't believe I'm saying that, but yes, more importantly than owning Bitcoin is understanding. It's so rare. It's so valuable. It's so scarce. It's immutable and on and on and on all the positivities of it. You can never not afford to have more Satoshis in your bag. And the best way to do it is to dollar cost average in. And I want you to see so let's take person A who bought right here exactly a year ago and they held their Solana bag. So obviously depressed here. This uh, was, I believe, yep, the FTX collapse. 
And then boom, 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 we, we hit a low of right around what, $8 popped up, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And then almost a year later, you finally came back into the profit. So this is why we speak of diamond hands. Now you have to understand, you don't want to do this with a failing project. Unfortunately, a lot of people I talk to, they're holding stuff from, you know, three or four years ago, that's just dying projects. And you have to know when to cut your losses. Okay. You have to, you don't get married to these things for fun. Yes. You have my permission to get married to Bitcoin. I personally don't think you should get married to anything else. That's me personally. It doesn't mean I don't own other tokens because I do. But when I say get married, you know, I take marriage seriously. Okay. And let me just hop out of the charts for a second because I want to make a very important point. Listen very carefully. You should never sell anything. It doesn't matter whether it's Bitcoin or Solana or maybe an old Mickey Mantle baseball card. It doesn't matter what it is with the principle I'm teaching here. You should never sell anything unless there is something better to put the money into. Again, let me say that one more time. You should never sell anything unless there's something better to put the money into. Okay, very important to remember. Now, that doesn't count on if you're taking your losses. So if you foolishly got into a meme coin, and let's say you bought in with $1,000, and now half of your money's gone, again, in my opinion, I would take the loss, <laughs> get your $500 out, and put it in something better, like Bitcoin. Okay, so again, but if all you own is Bitcoin and you sell it, what are you going to put it in? That's my question to you. There's no better asset on this planet to put it in. Oh, well, Renzi, I'm going to put it in real estate. Why? Now you're going to start paying all these taxes and, and you know, having your money locked up and now having to start dealing with banks and, and realtors and closing costs and lawyers and just on and on and on. Okay, so that's not wise. Oh, well, I'm, you know, going to put it in the stock market. Again, why? Most of you probably already have money in the stock market. It's good to have diversity, and it's even better to have diversity in the best asset on the planet. And remember, when I speak of diversity, I'm not talking about let's just buy as much widespread stuff as we can. Like Warren Buffett said, diversity is for people that don't know what they're doing. And that's very true, but there's still a window of diversity you do want to have. So for example, I like to do things a lot of times in threes. Pick your three favorite stocks, pick your three favorite uh, cryptocurrency or Bitcoin. That's one way to look at it. Then that way you have some diversification. There's some people that just, you know, pick all, all these ETFs and all these index funds. And the next thing you know, they also own 50 different stocks. And it's just, that's too much diversity. So I just want to explain what he meant by that. Because obviously, if you see Berkshire Hathaway, he's got quite a bit of diversification in there, but he obviously knows what he's doing. So again, just want to make sure you understand where I'm coming from with that point. So just remember, don't sell anything unless you have something better to put it in. And again, I'm talking to people, very important, one final point, talking to people that are financially set and ready to invest. I'm not talking about I did stupid stuff with my money. I have no money to pay my bills. Yes, then you need to sell stuff to live. Okay, I'm not talking to those people. This is strictly for people that have investments, you know, are not necessarily living paycheck to paycheck and are trying to better themselves. You do not sell anything unless there's something better to put it into. All right, now let's go back to the charts. Okay, so now, Let's take person B and let's do an example with them. So remember person A bought here a year ago and basically they are just finally up uh, three, three weeks ago, they got their money back. Okay. Now person B bought here, but then they continue to dollar cost average in every single month. So they bought some here and I'm going by the markers down here at the bottom. They bought some here, they bought some here, 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 so on and so forth. By the time Solana turns here, they're in the profit 
more like in this range, around the $30 range. That's the beauty of DCAing in because you're lowering your cost basis. So you bought in here at $38.81, and every time you buy lower, that number comes down, and it continues to come down. This is why this is so powerful with Bitcoin, especially if you want to hold Bitcoin long term. You just continue to dollar cost average in. But I mean, you know, what more of a perfect example could you look for here? Because we're almost, like I said, a year of wasted money, right? But you don't look at it as wasted money if you're buying with conviction in something you want to own, okay? Like a Bitcoin, like a Solana. So this is a very important and powerful tool. So I highly recommend dollar cost averaging in to what you love and what you have passion for with investing. But please use caution when I say those words, I have to be careful. Just be smart if you own meme coins, okay? I, I would not be doing this with meme coins. It doesn't mean, hear me closely, it doesn't mean you cannot make money with Doge. It doesn't mean you cannot make money with all these other meme coins. Because yes, you can. Shiba, Pepe, all of these guys, yes. But do I own any of them? Absolutely not. No. It's not worth my time. It's not worth the headache. I'm not, you know, trying to get rich quickly, okay? That to me is bunk, okay? Anything worth doing takes time to be done correctly, okay? Okay. So that's just who I am. That's what this channel is about. I want to teach you and lead you the right way. So at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, if you do everything correctly, you're going to have the goals you set out for. You will. But if you're just chasing rainbows, well, usually you know how that goes. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at Ethereum. So I wanted to talk on Ethereum a little bit. For years now, I've had a love-hate relationship with Ethereum. I just feel ever since Ethereum has moved from proof of work to proof of stake, it's hurt the ethos of the token. It just, it hasn't had the same vigor to it. It hasn't had the same pump to it. And again, I, I still own it. I still hold it. But I have definitely been shaving off a lot of my position and rolling it into Bitcoin. And as you can see, so I showed you the 200 day moving average for Bitcoin is up, for Solana is up. But look at this, it's heading down for Ethereum. And again, this is on the daily. You can see it trading tightly in these channels. This has been super easy to actually trade on, but I'm looking long term. I just, I don't know, to be honest with you. And if it pumps, great. Okay. Follow you ETH holders, I, I wish you well. Like I said, I do have ETH, but I'm just, I'm kind of on the fence with this token, okay? Just kind of seeing what's going on. Because I can tell you right now, even if it pumps this month and next month, I still don't have the conviction in it like I used to. Because it used to really follow the aggression of Bitcoin very closely. And they've seemed to decouple from each other like it's not even funny. Again, Bitcoin pumps 20%, Ethereum goes up like 3%. You know, and Solana is just really leaving Ethereum in the dust. So again, that's why I say don't marry these altcoins, okay? If you're a long-term believer that Ethereum is like oil and you need to hold some of it for long-term exposure, again, that's fine. You do you. I still believe, please hear me, there's money to be made in Ethereum. Yes. But is it that fast mover it used to be? Doesn't seem like it to me. Like I said, I, I just feel since they moved to proof of state, it just seems to have lost some of its luster. You take that for what it's worth. Now, for those of you that have stayed to the end, I want to give you a bonus nugget. Because what was the title of this video? Earn more money, right? And I want to talk about Tesla. Now, you know, I made a video about this as well. Very bullish video about it. Again, for those of you that haven't seen that one as well, you can click here and you can watch that for yourself. Remember, this is more than a crypto channel. This is a wealth creation channel, okay? And I told you I'm going to take you on my journey with me. And I'm a big Tesla shareholder, okay? And to me, there's a golden opportunity here. 
that I want to share with my community. Again, not financial advice, entertainment, educational purposes only, but I'm telling you me what I'm doing. Now, whether you love Tesla vehicles or not, that doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't matter because for the longest, I was really not a fan of the vehicle. Okay. I still love ice engines in, in internal combustion engine, in case you don't know what ice stands for. I just want you to know you cannot necessarily be into the Tesla cars to not see the beauty of this company. Okay. Because the thing with Tesla is, let me pull up David Lee's adoption chart. This is an amazing S-curve adoption chart. EVs just make up a tiny, tiny portion of Tesla. As you can see, FDS and RoboTaxi make up a little bit more, but look how large of a company Tesla is when it comes to energy, but even bigger, look at this AI and robotics. So you have to understand Tesla is, I, I kind of almost want to pair it with Bitcoin, you know, like Tesla is the Bitcoin of the stock market, if you will. Again, I know that's a little far-fetched what I'm saying, but I'm just trying to draw a correlation to where the future is coming. Robots are coming. AI is coming. Again, whether you like it or not, times are changing. Trust me, I love the big, powerful gas engines, but you know what? Those things are changing. I think by 2030, most, I think almost half the cars on the road are going to be battery powered. Something to consider. But when I pull up the Tesla chart, here's what I want you to understand. You can see this range between what? 216 and 300. And you can see the 200 day moving average pointing upward strongly. You can also see, again, this is the weekly chart, how now we're back in the bullish sentiment. My personal opinion, anything under $300 in Tesla is a, is super cheap. Anything under $250 is a steal. And obviously, anything under $230 is like, what are you doing? Okay? Seriously. Again, my opinion, this is something that, we're going to want to hold long-term. So these Tesla positions are something ideally you want to hold at least, I'd say probably seven to 10 years, if you want to see the max return. From all the future projections I've done, it's looking like somewhere in that time range where you're really going to see this huge pop. Now, I'll take it a step further for those of you who really want to be smart. For anyone that has a Roth IRA, this is an investment vehicle in which you put money you've already paid tax on in an investment account and it grows tax free. So when you retire and you take it out, you don't owe any taxes on the gains. So imagine how powerful that is if you can get Tesla in a Roth IRA. So just awesome. a nugget I really want to share with you. Trust me, I'm going to point back at this video definitely in the future because I know Tesla is going to leave. $220 in the dust. And again, just my opinion. I want to keep stressing that night financial advice. But for those of you that track this stuff and keep an eye on it, I want you to see the opportunities that we had here. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here and staying and watching until the end. Please remember tomorrow is not promised to anyone. God bless you. And I'll see you next time. And please guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Smash that like for me. And I'll see you 